Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cali. In this episode, I'ma detail Five Deuce Hoover Crip rapper, Schoolboy Q. Schoolboy Q was born Quincy Hanley on October 26, 1986. He will be born to an army family and was born on the United States Army base. With his mom and dad divorcing, Schoolboy Q and his mom would later move to LA. They would move to South Central to be exact and move on 51st and Figueroa. Now that area would be a hell of an area to grow up in. That would be smack dead in the Hoovers, which has multiple cliques claiming Hoover, and that would be in the Fidus Hoovers turf, a well-known and hated gang in Los Angeles. The Fidus Hoovers are one of eight Hoover cliques and are the only Hoover to claim Gangsta Crib. Outside of other Hoover sets, the Fidus Hoovers are clicked up with the Five One Troubles, making the Five One Deuce Alliance. The Fidus Hoovers are around various rivals, like the Rolling 40 Crips, the Rolling 50 Crips, which includes hoods like the 5-5 five five and the 5-7 five neighborhood Crips, and also the Rolling 60 Crips. At 12 years old, Schoolboy would become a part of the gang lifestyle after hanging around a friend who would join the Fidus Hoovers, making him want to join as well. When you, as a kid, when you knew that you were going to enter that world and be a part of like, Rapping? No. Oh, gang. Oh, I, like I said, I tell people this story all the time. When I when I joined the set, I like I was it was an accident. Like my homie said, he was about to do. It. I'm like, I'm gonna go too. Let's go. You know where where I mean? do you go? Where does one like? What does that mean? Like, I mean, you go to the block where all the homies be at. Or the homies could be on your block. You know what I'm saying? Y'all have a conversation. You get put on or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Like the homie went to the park. I followed him. And so, okay, so how did, okay, so, so for so, someone like me who's so lost even understanding this, yeah. what, how does that then begin? What is then, you what? Ha- all right, first you have to grow up in the set. But you have to grow up in the set, for one. For two, you have to know at least more than one person. You know what I'm saying? You got to be kicking it with them. Y'all went to school together or something. He know your mom or auntie or something. You know what I mean? And references, three, if you will, say. Okay, references. Yeah, in three, you can't be no mark. You got to have a little heart. You know what I mean? Some people, there be marks that always get put on gangs. You know what I mean? Snitches and busters won't fight when the time comes or whatever. But, I mean, it is what it is. Like, everybody got busters, but he probably had heart that day. He got put on. You get what I'm saying? But they people knew. People have moments. Because I had moments where I was shaking at times. Where I, was like, I don't know if I really want to do this. When it hits the fan, I turn to a whole different person. You know what I mean? Some people fold under pressure and some people don't. Just, I mean, you just got to know people and it's just something that you just do. How old were you? 12. 12. And they are, how did they know that you had heart already? Like, did you fight in school? I mean, yeah. I mean, we was all in a clique first, like a little gang called Flirts. Because, like, it wasn't Crips or Bloods. We was just calling ourselves. A, we was, like, 30 deep. You know what I mean? And the homies weren't having that no more. The older homies, like, y'all can't keep running around our hood claiming this little clique. You got to... You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm like, come on, let's go. So that was it for flirts. Yeah, that was it. It was over. And which actual and which actual set did you claim? Fados Hoover. Even though he was claiming a game, Schoolboy Q focused more on making it out the hood and thought sports would be his way out. He attended John Muir Middle School, then for high school he went to Crenshaw High School, where he played football. Trying to make it to the next level, Schoolboy went to multiple colleges trying to get looks for football. He would attend schools like Los Angeles City College and Los Angeles Southwest College. After his football career wouldn't go far, Q would die deep in the streets and start doing anything to get money, from selling drugs and hitting licks. And in 2007, Q would get six months for a robbery and he would take probation. This would make him decide to change his life and try out rapping. This whole thing about how like he was locked up for a while and then once he got out of jail, he became famous. Is that true? Like, did he, was he- Okay, uh, that, I get like, what you're saying, but basically he, uh, T.I.P., rest in peace, the homie Lil, uh, one Punch, Art Lester, you feel me, and T Rail, they all went and allegedly tried to rob a house as the police said, flock a house. Uh-huh. They knocked on the door allegedly. It didn't even go down. You feel me? They turned around, walked to the car. When they got in the car, police yeah. got them. And the homie Art Lester was just fresh out from doing eight years. You feel oh my me? God. On federal, on not federal parole, but on penitentiary parole. Jeez. He ended up taking all the time. Q ended up uh, taking probation. Terrell ended up. Q would begin to associate himself with up and coming record label TDE, which had up and coming rappers like Ab Soul, Kendrick Lamar, and J Rock already. Q would release his first mixtape called Schoolboy Turn Hustler on July 29th, 2008, with GED Inc which was the label that brought Tiger out. This would help build Tiger and Schoolboy's relationship. 
After the release of Schoolboy and Turn Hustler, Q signed a deal with TDE, and in 2009, him and fellow label mates formed the group, Black Hippie. The group included Kendrick Lamar, J-Rock, and Av Soul. All artists would go on to have successful careers. In 2009, Q would be in a short-lived feud with 40 Glock, after 40 Glock started beefing with Lil Wayne and Tyga. Schoolboy took matters in his own hands and were having a good relationship with Tyga, and his label TDE being connected to Lil Wayne, he would drop two diss songs to 40 Glock, one being called Ezel and the other one being called Put On For The Fifties. But this wouldn't be a common thing for Schoolboy's career. He took a different approach with his rap career, with him not game making much in his songs and not having rap beefs. May 14th, 2009, Schoolboy's second mixtape called Gangsta and Soul would drop. In 2010, he would be torn with TDE and wouldn't release any music. 2011, Schoolboy would drop his first album called Setbacks, with features from label mates and group mates J-Rock, Ab Soul, and Kendra Lamar, and also other features like Janae Aiko. 2012, Schoolboy would drop Habits and Contradictions, with features from Janae Aiko, Currency, Aesop Rocky, Dom Kennedy, and his Black Hippie crew. That same year, Kendra Lamar would drop Good Kid, Mad City. This would go on to be a classic album. This would give Schoolboy motivation to step his game up. And somebody like Kendrick Lamar, like what? I'm blessed. I'm blessed that that's one of my friends. Like the fact that that's my friend, homie. Like I came up with cuz it's like what? Like, psh. and I was like, at, at okay. any point, at any point in my career, in my life, I'll never be better than him. Never. I'll never be a better father. I'll never be a better man. Nah, never you be can't say that. No, listen to me. You have to understand who the sensei is and you have to respect it. I'll never be better than him. So and I accept that. And But I'm better than everybody else. As a father, you saying too, though? You, you grouping that into fatherhood? Yeah. He was a father long before him. Yeah. So you, you could have possibly been his sensei. But, that but you know, I'm saying what, what he did for me made me the father I am. I get that, yeah. He made me who I am. Yeah. Like, I would never be better than him. So he built that character, basically. He built my he character. He built that he character. Built, you know what I'm it. I ain't gonna say yeah, he built like, it, he exposed it. He exposed what you already had that's, in you. That's why. Helped you. Like, I mean, you can say that, yeah. but I'm just saying, I'll never be better than that dude. You know what I mean? After being on tour the rest of 2012, Schoolboy would release songs from his up and coming album in 2013. He would drop songs like Collard Greens and Man of the Year. Both songs would become hits. In 2014, Q would drop another album called Oxymoron, with those two songs being the lead singles, as well as another song called Studio. Oxymoron album would go platinum. In 2016, Schoolboy would drop another album. The album was called Blank Face LP, with lead singles like That Part, which featured Kanye West. The album featured other artists like SZA, Jadakiss, Finn Staples, E-40, Miguel, and several others. The album would eventually go gold, and he put several of his homies on the album, like Traffic and TF. They were on songs like Tookie Nose. 2017 and 2018, Q would be making music, but kept getting delays on his album. And with the death of close friend Mac Miller, he would decide to delay the album more and take time away from music. With Mac Miller's death being from an overdose, Q would decide to stop doing drugs himself and pick up some hobbies. He decided to start playing golf which he would later have a commercial later on for Top Golf. He would also compete in the PGA Tour, which he was invited at the AT&T Pebble Pro Am. April 2019, Q dropped the album Crash Talk, which featured other artists like Travis Scott, Ty Dolla Sign, YG, 21 Savage, Kid Cudi, and Lil Baby. This album was pushed back weeks with the death of Nipsey Hussle on March 31st, 2019. Even though Nipsey and Schoolboy was from Anime Hoods, they had mutual respect for each other. I mean, Schoolboy from Hoover, I got respect for Schoolboy. You know what I mean? Our, our hoods beef in a real way, mm -hmm. in a real way, on site killing the Hoovers in the neighborhood car. You feel me? But I, I got respect for Schoolboy. And I got, you know, one of the reasons is because I saw what happened with Death Row. I'm not putting nothing out this week. Like, no, nobody should be putting out nothing out this week. Like. I, I don't even know how to do these type of videos, dog. Like, I don't even know. I'm just giving y'all, like, don't want to put no music out this week. I mean, next week, week or something, we can do that. Like, you know what I mean? But I don't know. But, like, 
right now, no, it's not cool. It's not pure. That's not me. Y'all know how I get you know, out of the You being from L.A. <sighs> Bruh, it was the weirdest feeling. True. It's still weird. Even being in L.A. Mm. It's just weird. It's just weird, man. Because, like, when I got the news, I was, like, sleep. I, I, I got woke up to it. Like, they killed Nipsey. I'm like, what? You get what I'm saying? Like, then I look at my phone, and my phone's crazy. And, like, it's just, and it's just like, what? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't yeah. get it. Yeah. The whole day, I just, I was like a lie. Like, I didn't get it. Like, the first two days, really, it was just like a lie. And then it just hit you like, bruh. After 2020, Q will remain silent. And would it be heard from much besides an occasional tweet on Twitter? And how it's been out the way and out the media? Besides popping back up a few months ago, after being on podcasts back on Fig and being on podcasts multiple times, Q hasn't been around the industry and hasn't dropped the album since 2019. Q is now 37 and a father of two. And even if he's not doing music much, he's still a successful artist with five Grammy nominations and albums that went gold and went platinum. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my previous episodes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.